This is the sixth and final section of the forces and motions chapter and here we look at pulleys. Now a pulley is just something that redirects a force. Okay so normally with a pulley, pulley type questions what we have are two masses connected by a light and extensible string. Let's so let, do something like this. So let's say we've got two masses like this and there's some string connected to that goes over the pulley, redirects the force and goes down here. That's one type of question. Let's move that mass across a bit. Or the other type of question is where the force is uh, redirected at a right angle. So we'll have one mass here like this. There'll be some other mass down here. And then we'll have a pulley here like this and the string or rope or whatever's connecting them redirects the force there goes around at a right angle and is connected there. Now they're meant to be connected in the middle. Yeah, so I'll just uh, move my uh, mass around a little bit like this and maybe we'll label these uh, mass one mass two mass one mass two like this and we tackle these questions in the same type of way now in the previous section we had objects moving in the same direction so we can clump them together here we've got masses moving in different directions so for example if mass 2 was greater than mass 1 then what will happen is mass 1 will move up it will accelerate up and mass 2 will accelerate down now that value of acceleration will be the same because the string is inextensible okay so that's one of the assumptions we make because it's inextensible the mass will be or sorry the acceleration will be the same you haven't got one moving faster than the other and then the same with this that's going to be accelerating that way these questions the one at the top it always accelerates across towards the pulley and then the other mass is going to be accelerating downwards again the value of the acceleration here and here will be the same because the string is inextensible that's one of the assumptions that we make okay so we've got something that links the these two masses and we've got something that links these two masses which is the acceleration now with these types of questions we have to split the system up into parts to see what's going on so what i'm going to do i'm going to put the tension on so you've got tension here pulling up from that mass we've got tension here pulling up from that mass but we also have the weight of this mass m1g going down and the weight of this mass going down m2g and what we have is maybe if i highlight it this is a system this is something we can write an equation from which we'll do in a moment this is a system here this is something else we can write an equation for but two separate equations but where a is the same for both so if i start with the bit that i've highlighted in green what we call the equation of motion for that pulley because it's moving up to find the resultant force it will be t because it's moving that way that's the greater force minus m1g that's going down so that's the resultant force and that will equal the mass of that times by the acceleration so this is an equation of motion for the bit of the system i've highlighted in green for the bit that i've highlighted in yellow that equation of motion is going to be slightly different since it's moving down the resultant force would be m2g that's greater than the t pulling up and that will equal the mass of that second mass times by the acceleration 
So this would be a second equation of motion. But we know that in both of those equations, A can be used to link them together because A will be the same in both. And also T will be the same in both. So we could use T here to link these two together because the tension will be the same in both. And lastly, we can look at uh, this part of the system as well. What's going on here? Well, we have tension being pulling down from the pulley there. So tension there, tension there. And this is exerting a force up here. So I could write a third equation. Let's do that maybe highlight that in orange. So that equation, now it's not moving, so it's not an equation of motion, it'll be a balancing equation, will be that the force that the pulley is exerting on the bit that it's connected to up here, the ceiling or the roof, is equal to those two tensions going down. So it'll be F equals 2T. So that F, that's the force the pulley is exerting on the ceiling. So I'll call that ceiling or roof at the top there. That's basically this thing up here. Right, now if we go across to this diagram here, we can do the same type of thing. We can write equations of motion equations of motion so let's start with mass number one so we're going to write an equation based on what's going on here so we need to put the tension on so we'll have tension here we'll have tension here We'll have the weight of the mass here. And we'll also have tensions here. We'll talk about those in a moment when we look at the force um, that the exerted on the pulley. So let's highlight the colors again. So this bit up here will be a system that we'll write an equation for in a moment. And also this will be something we write an equation for in a moment. So let's start with what's in green, highlighted in green. Now, what's that going to be? Well, this could be smooth or it could be rough. OK, if it's smooth, then it will just be the only force will be T. Let's put some friction on here. So let's say that there was a frictional force. This is a, a rough surface and we'll call that frictional force F then the equation of motion will be T minus F equals MA. OK, so this would be if the that surface it, it was on was rough. If it was smooth, it would just be T equals um, MA. Let's look at the bit that's highlighted in yellow. Now, since M2 is moving down, the equation of motion would be M2G, because that's the greater force it's going down, minus T equals MA or M2A. So that would be our equation of motion for the mass that's going up and down. And just like before, we can link the equations together by T, because that will be the same in both. And A will be the same in both as well. OK, now in all of these questions, we will have a smooth pulley. Now, smooth pulley means that um, there's no friction in the pulley. The pulley is frictionless, which means that the tension will be the same um, 
in the whole string. So either side of the pulley, we have the same tension. OK, so smooth pulley tension is the same throughout the whole string. So you're often asked about what, what does that mean, that assumption that you've made that the pulley is smooth. And lastly, if we wanted to work out the force exerted, um, the force the pulley is exerting um, on like where it's connected or the, the force exerted on the pulley by the string um, on this second one here, then what we would have what we'd need to look at, there's our pulley. We've got tension there. We've got tension there like this. And we need to work out what's the combined effect of that tension. And we can sort of use some trigonometry to help us out because these are just vectors. So basically that's going to be T there as well. Yeah, so this can be just transferred down to there. And then we can use trigonometry basically to work out this angle. Yeah, this is going to be a sort of isosceles triangle here, T and T. We can work out the angle and we can work out the magnitude, the size of this as well uh, by using Pythagoras. OK, so here we've got two particles, P and Q, and we've been given their masses and they've been attached to light, the ends of light in extensible string. The string passes over a smooth pulley and the masses hang with the string taut and the system is released from rest. Let's draw a diagram of what's going on. OK, so here's our pulley like this connected to the ceiling like this. And we have our two masses like this. And the string passes over the pulley like this back down to the other mass, doesn't need to be a perfect drawing. And uh, one is P, one is Q, and the masses are 2M and 3M. OK, it's released from rest, so we're going to have U equals zero. Now, before we go into the questions, let's put on all the forces on here. So we will have 2MG, the weight of P, going down. 3mg the rate of q we have tension pulling so there's a tension there there's a tension there and when i do these questions i tend to sort of um just put little bubbles around each thing so i know where i'm going to get my equations of motion so all of that there's two equations and then i'm going to have tension here tension here pulling down on a pulley which is then pulling back up at uh, maybe a tension a force we'll call f there so this will form my third equation okay if needed right so part a we're ready now ready to go we've got everything on there uh, write down an equation of motion for p well that's now easy since we've put this on here now we need to know what direction it's moving in well the heavier mass is going to be the one that moves down lighter mass is going to be the one that moves up so this is going upwards that way that's the direction of acceleration and this is the direction this way that's going down so for an equation of motion for p since it's moving up the resultant force will be t minus 2 mg equals the mass times acceleration so 2 ma um, and then an equation of motion for Q. Now that's moving down, so it'll be 3mg minus T equals MA or 3MA. So there we go. And there's our equations of motion for P and Q. Okay, part B, it says find the acceleration of each mass. Now it's going to be the same for um, both so we can use our two equations of motion to find that so we'll put these two equations together but we want to eliminate t so maybe what i'll do is i'll take the first equation 
and I'll rearrange it to make T the subject so I can eliminate it from a second. So that'd be 2MA plus 2MG. Now, if I sub this, let's call this equation one. Okay, so I've just rearranged one. If I sub into my equation two, that'll be 3MG minus T. Now T is the 2MA plus 2MG equals 3MA. Now it looks like um, M is going to cancel out. Now I can do 3MG minus 2MG. So I've just got MG minus 2MA equals 3MA and the M's cancel out. So that will leave me with G minus 2A equals 3A. So I'm trying to find A, aren't I? So um, 5A, if I had 2A to both sides, equals G. So A equals G over 5. So I could leave it like that. Or if I'm going to divide it, I need to make sure that I give my answer to two or three significant figures. So G over five is 1.96. If I'm going to do three significant figures or two significant figures, it'll actually become two, won't it? So it might be better to leave it as G over five as the acceleration of both the masses. Part B, uh, so part C, we need to find a tension in the string. So this is just about uh, now eliminating A, or actually just substituting A to find T. So let me use this equation here, since I actually now know what A is. So T equals 2M a and a is g over 5 plus 2m g so we could write this actually as 2 over 5 m g plus 2 m g now the m doesn't cancel out so i'll have to leave our answer in terms of m g so we've got 2 over 5 and we're adding 2 to it so it leaves us basically 2.4 mg, or we could call it 12 over 5 mg. So 12 over 5 mg is the tension in the string. That's for part C. Part D, it's asking us to find the force exerted on the pulley by the string. OK, the force exerted by the pulley um, on the string, OK, is this F, what I've called F, and that's equal to 2T, those two tensions. So F equals those two tensions that are pulling down. OK, so this would be like my other equation, not really of motion, but equation of balance, really. So that force is basically just equal to two times the 12 over five mg. So that force that I've called F, we've got 12 over five times by two, and we get 24 over five mg or 4.8 mg, 24 over five mg. It's just the two tensions because they're both pulling downwards. So it's going to be basically double that uh, upward. And these are all Newtons, by the way. So I should put a little end there. Tension Newtons, Newtons. Right, OK, part E. Uh, find a distance moved by Q in the first four seconds, assuming P does not reach the pulley. Now, I said before, when you see anything about distance, uh, speed, time, um, then it's SUVAT. So I'll write SUVAT down like this. 
Okay, and I want to find the distance moved by Q in the first four seconds. Q is moving down, so I'm going to take downwards as positive. I want to find S, the distance. Now, in the question, it says the system is released from rest. So that means U is zero. Uh, v, I don't care about, so we'll leave that blank. A, well, that's the acceleration of the system, which we worked out in part B, which is G over five. And T is for four seconds. So the SUVA equation that has S, U, A, and T is going to be S equals UT plus half AT squared. So now it's just substituting S equals zero times T4 plus half times by G over five times by four squared. Let's see what this gives us. Obviously the law times four goes 0 0.5 times by uh, G over five and times by four squared, 16. Okay, that gives us exactly eight over five G. So you can leave it like that, fine. Or if you're gonna press the SD button or times it by 9.8, then you're going to get 15.68 but we need to round that to two or three significant figures so if we're going to do that we'll either write 15.7 or two significant figures would be 16 okay but there's no reason why you can't leave it in terms of g and then you don't need to worry about any type of rounding so all of these are meters by the way that's the distance that it's moved in the, um, let's put that as three significant figures, that's two significant figures. That's the distance it's moved in the first four seconds. The last part of this question, part F, state how you have used the fact that the pulley is smooth in your calculations. Now we said something before about when the pulley is smooth, the tension is the same throughout the whole string. OK, so the assumption will be that the tension is the same throughout the string. So that goes back to um, these equations here, these equations of motion, these values of T, we use the same letter. So the assumption is the tension is the same at P and at Q. Okay, right, let's draw what's going on here. So we have a mass on a rough horizontal table and that mass is A. So let's this one, write this down here, A, and its mass is 0 0.4 kg. It's connected by string over here to another mass, which is B. And that is 0 0.8 kg. Since it's a rough table um, and it's a smooth pulley, the string passes over the pulley, B hangs freely, string is taut, um, 0 0.5 meters above the ground. Okay, so let's make this a little bit longer. There's the ground, so this is 0 0.5 meters, like this. Um, we'll put in the forces, so we've got tension there. We've got tension here. Since this is rough, there's going to be some sort of frictional force. Ah, and it says frictional force of magnitude 0.0 g opposes the motion of A. So this is 0.08 g here. And then we need to put on here the weight of mass B, which will be 0.8 g. OK, now I'll put these on as well, just in case we need to find anything out about the force the string exerts on the pulley. OK, so that will be that. Uh, this will be 
an equation of motion here and this will be an equation of motion here. Um, mass A is accelerating towards the right on my diagram and mass B will be accelerating downward. So part A, find the acceleration of the system. So we need our equations of motion. So let's write down the equation of motion for A. Since it's moving to the left, the resultant force will be T minus 0 0.08 G equals MA or 0 0.4 A. For B, the equation of the motion will be 0 0.8 G minus T, that's the resultant force, equals MA or 0 0.8 A. So to find the acceleration, I need to eliminate T. So let me take equation one and make T the subject. So I have T equals 0.4 A plus 0.08 G. I will sub that into equation two. So I will have 0.8 G minus 0.4 A plus 0.08 G equals 0.8 A. So that's 0.8 G and then minus 0.08 G and then I will add 0.4 A to both sides. So on the left, I'll be left with 0.72 G equals 1.2 A. So from there, I will have A equals 0.72 G divided by 1.2. So if I do that, 0.72 divided by 1.2 is 3 fifths. So I'm going to leave it in terms of G. So the acceleration is 3 fifths G. So I'm not going to change it to a decimal where I need to round and use my rounded answer. Let's keep it in terms of G. That's going to be more useful later on. Oh, and that's meters per second squared. Part B, we need to find the time taken for B to reach the ground. So you see the word time. That means SUVAT. S-U-V-A-T. Now we're looking at B to reach the ground, B is moving down, so we'll take downwards as positive. And uh, we know that S is 0.5, because it's 0.5 meters above the ground. U, it says that it's released from rest, so U is zero. V, we're not interested in. A will be the acceleration of the system, which is 3 fifths G. And T is what we want to find. OK, so that's S equals UT plus half AT squared. So that's 0 0.5 equals 0 times by T plus half times 3 fifths G. That's our acceleration times by T squared. So we'll have 0 0.5 equals now half of three fifths will be three tenths, three tenths G T squared. So T squared is going to be 0 0.5 divided by three tenths G. So that would be um, T squared five over three G. So you could leave it like that, five over three G. So you could say T is equal to, you could leave it in this form, 5 over, or the root, square root of 5 over 3G. If we actually work out what that is, so 5 over 3 times 9.8, and we square root that, we get 5 root 3 over 21, but don't write that down, because you'll lose a mark. So T... Uh, 0.41239, so on. We need to give it to two or three significant figures. So T equals 
two significant figures or three significant figures. OK, moving on then to part C. We want to find the total distance travelled by A before it comes to rest. Right, so let's try and understand what's going on. B will move down by half a metre. It will hit the ground, but A will carry on moving. But it will decelerate because there's no tension. When B hits the ground, this string is no longer taut. It goes loose and floppy. A carries on moving for a little while and then comes to a stop. So we know that the total distance it's going to move is going to be 0 0.5 plus however more it moves once the tension is gone. Now, when the tension is gone, the acceleration on this changes. It changes to a deceleration. And we're going to use that deceleration with SUVAT to work out how far that it moves. So our final answer is going to be 0.5 meters plus the distance A moves one when the tension is gone. And the tension will go because this stops moving, this carries on moving, so this str string goes loose. So how are we going to work that out? Well, when the tension is gone, the only force acting on A will be this force here. OK, so let's draw what that looks like. So when the string goes loose like this, the only force acting on A will be this 0.08 G on this 0.4 kg. So we are going to work out the deceleration, or it's probably going to be a negative acceleration. Let's work out the acceleration, and we'll find it's going to be negative. OK, so using F equals MA. Right, and we're taking, let's say we take this one as positive, what force is, what's the resultant force? Negative 0.08 G, because it's going the opposite way to what we're taking as positive, equals MA 0.4 A. So from there we can work out what the acceleration is. That's going to be um, negative 0.08 G divided by 0.4. Let's work that out and see what we get. And that's negative 150G. OK, so that's the deceleration of A. So now we're going to use SUVAT. Now, with SUVAT, we're actually taking to the left as positive. A is minus 150G. We want to know when it comes to rest, so V is zero. And we want to find S. But you'll notice we don't have enough knowns. OK, so what we really need to know is what speed was this traveling when this hit the ground? And it will be traveling at the same speed as this. So we need to go back. And we need to find this value here, which is the speed A was traveling, A was moving when B hit the ground. So we're going to have to make a bit of space up here so we can answer that question. So let's just clear this off. Now, this is not that difficult. We can go back to part B, but instead of finding T, we want to find V instead. So there's our SUVAT. Like before, taking downwards as positive, we're finding the speed that B hit the ground. So here we want to find V instead of T, but we use the same values. S is 0.5, U is 0, A is 3 fifths A, sorry, 3 fifths G. So 
the equation that we want to use is going to be v squared equals u squared plus 2as. This will give us the speed at which b hits the ground, which will be the speed that a was traveling before the string went loose and there was no more tension. So v squared equals u squared zero squared plus two times uh, three fifths g times 0.5. So v squared, that's just three fifths g. So we could take v equal to the square root of three fifths g like that without having to change it to a decimal. So all of that work was basically to find this, the speed A was moving when B hit the ground. So in here, we can put square root 350G. So maybe what I'll do is write out my SUVA again. Here, um, S was what we were trying to find. U, the speed that A was moving when B hit the ground. Well, that's the square root of 350G, which we've just worked out. V, when it comes to rest. And A is minus 1 fifth G. So it's V squared equals U squared plus 2AS again. Right, so V squared is just going to be 0 squared. U squared. Now, because we've used this value here, if we square it, it just becomes 350 again. So it's useful to work in terms of G plus 2 times by negative of 5G times by S, which is what we're trying to find. So S is going to equal minus 3 fifths G um, divided by um, 2 times by negative a fifth g. Now what will happen is the g's will cancel out. So this is the advantage of working in terms of g. The negatives will cancel out. So you basically end up with 3 fifths divided by 2 fifths, which is exactly 3 over 2. Now, what does that tell us? That tells us that after B hits the ground, A travels for another one and a half meters. So the total distance that it's going to move will be 0 0.5 plus this distance we've just worked out, three over two. So that's basically 0 0.5 plus 1.5 so we'll get an answer to part B as two meters. It will move for two meters. There we go. Before it eventually uh, comes to rest and stops moving. Be helpful if I highlighted it instead. There we go. So the answer for part C, we've got there eventually two meters. You should now be able to do exercise 10F on pages 175 to 177. So in these questions, we had um, masses moving in different directions over pulleys. So it was either where we had something like this, or it was something like this. A pulley redirects a force and the pulleys in the questions that we will be doing, they will be smooth. So smooth pulleys. Now, if you've got a smooth pulley, that means that the tension is unchanged. So wherever you measure the tension in the string, it will be the same. Might be worth putting some forces on. So we're going to have weights going down here. Let's call this M1G, M2G, M1, M2. Tension here, tension here, tension here, tension here, and a force up here. Whereas with these ones, 
let's call this M1 and uh, M2. Let's say that we've got tension here and tension here. Pull all of those on and we have the weight here. And let's say that this is rough, not a smooth surface. So we'll have some sort of uh, frictional force there. And with all of these, we want to split them up like this equation of motion for that an equation of motion for this a balanced equation for this bit same here an equation of motion here a balance equation here an equation of motion here and because the string is inextensible we know that the acceleration is going to be the same wherever we uh, go in this system. So uh, really useful to have clear diagrams on these types of questions, put all the forces on and maybe highlight the different sections so you can see clearly your separate equations of motion. And we've done examples where we've used SUVAT and what connects SUVAT to um, F equals MA is this acceleration. Yeah, the acceleration will be the same in both um, parts of the, the system. And lastly, when there's no tension, okay, and there will be no tension if the string breaks, or if um, one of the objects hits the ground okay so one mass let's say stops moving for some reason then there will be no tension when there is no tension the acceleration changes and then the acceleration normally changes to a deceleration which you will need to work out by using F equals MA. And then once you've got that new acceleration or deceleration, then uh, you, would, you can then use SUVAT to work out how long it's gonna be moving for, how far or how long.